New Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. Good morning, dear ones. Reverend Robert with you here on a Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Time for our Science of Mind and Spirit lecture series. Uh, if you were expecting Reverend Michelle Wadley, well, the new Reverend Dr. Michelle Wadley is not going to be with us today. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment or two. Uh, she is traveling and uh, had uh, and schedules change and from when she originally signed up for this week. So I'm here with you and uh, I'm Reverend Robert. I'm here with you today and I get to um, share with you this concept of Amplify the Flow. Now, if you've been with us throughout the year, you know that beginning in the very early part of the year, we started studying the Science of Mind textbook. Mine should be around here somewhere. And uh, that we started doing chapter by chapter. That took us through about June of our year. And since then, we've been playing with different ideas and different themes as a team. And what I want you to know is uh, we're going to continue next year. And we're looking at who's going to be on the team and, and who might move on to, you know, other options and other opportunities. And, and in it all, what we're doing, I believe, is studying and exploring true practical applications, if you will, of the science of mind and spirit uh, text. So uh, yeah, thank you, Roy. Uh, it was a long drive coming home yesterday and uh, not much time to do the hair this morning. So uh, that's where it is. Thank you for that. Uh, all right. So amplifying the flow. Yes. And you might be able to hear Laura snickering in the background. As uh, she, I probably just didn't want to tell me my hair looked a mess. So, uh, <laughs> it's Saturday mornings. We have fun here, you know. That's part of what New Thought Media Network's all about. It's about being authentic. It's about being real. And it's about showing up when spirit says, okay, show up. It, it's not about uh, everything being perfect all the time. <laughs> and those that follow the program know that we're far from perfect here all the time. So, uh, but we have fun. And I believe that, that in that is a big part of the perfection. But that's another talk. We'll get to that at another time today. Uh, I do want to say a shout out uh, to Reverend Victoria for her talk last week and, uh, and let you know that uh, she'll actually be back with us again next week, the way the schedule is flopping and flipping and flopping. And uh, next week, what we'll be talking about uh, is entering into uh, November and the talk is why gratitude why gratitude that'll be for next week so all right <clears throat> amplify the flow two primary words amplify and flow i think we all know what amplify by is right we turn up the volume turn up the signal now generally what we're going to talk about in a few moments here is there has to be an input to amplify right? Okay. The second aspect of this talk today is this idea of flow. Now, flow <clears throat> has both its, its active verb connotations and, and people talk about being in the flow, but we don't always talk about what it is we're in the flow of. 
with me? Well, some would say maybe we're in the flow of the divine. Okay. We can go down these perception rabbit holes forever looking at well i'm in the i'm in my prosperity flow or uh, i'm in the flow of of good vibes coming my way or maybe just good weather <laughs> and in a good weather flow we hear we hear the term used there as well so one of the ways that i love to play with titles like this is to um let's play with it right and let's use an anagram what if flow for today is fully living from opulent wonder. Fully living from opulent wonder. Living our lives from a sense, fully living our lives. Not holding back, not playing small, not saying I can't. Live fully living from opulent wonder. <clears throat> a little frog in my throat as well. Now, I don't want anybody to look at that word opulent and think extravagant. It's not what it is. Opulence and has, for me, has never been about excess. It's not about golden toilets or, or, or shower uh, fixtures. Right? It's about having that sense of knowing that there's always more than enough. And I can tap into, excuse me, tap into whatever's necessary at whatever time to bring forward what's best for my life, for my ministry. Now, you have that same ability as well. Always remember all of this. None of this is, it makes me anything special. It just means I practice these things. You practice them as well. And the wonder... I learned this a long, long time ago. It comes from a place of recognizing that no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in life, there is a higher vision unfolding. There is a higher power that is uh, directing, that is fulfilling beliefs and requests and thoughts and feelings and, and demonstrating and manifesting the collective energetic vibration of who we are, who we believe we are, what we believe we're worthy of. There's far too many people in the world live from a life of <clears throat> opulent worry. They, they have tons of worry in their life. And tons of concern in their life. And, and the what if world. Well, what if this doesn't happen? And what if that? And more and more and more the experiences I, I witness and I live in point to the fact that we get what we get. And then we get on with it. And if <clears throat> what we get isn't what we thought we wanted, then get on with it anyway. Get on with it anyway. We get what we get. And what we get, again, is that sum total of our own beliefs and thoughts, feelings, the environment we create around us, the, the, the cycle of thought. We all know how, how those thoughts have a tendency to feed themselves, right? One bad, one bad experience in a day, and next thing we know, the whole day's gone to, gone to hell. One great experience, and the day keeps getting better. So it's up to each of us <clears throat> not to just learn this philosophy of the science of mind, of new thought, right? And remember... Science of Mind is, is an avenue within new thought. That's sp pretty specifically what we're, we stay pretty close to the new thought, to the science of mind philosophy here on this program. But over the network across, across all of life, there is this broader range of new thought that allows us to, to also look at life through, from different perspectives, through different experiences. This past week, 
talking about Reverend Michelle. This past week, Reverend Michelle um, accepted a doctorate degree, an earned doctorate degree, uh, with an organization and uh, known as the Affiliated New Thought Network. Got their coffee mug right there. Oh, see you there. See their logo there. Yeah. Uh, and she was able to, and I was there to witness this and be a part of this and experience this. And this group of people, for me, absolutely represent living from opulent wonder. Living from opulent wonder. When I witnessed countless, countless acts of giving, of absolute open gift, not just gifting, but giving of time, talent, treasure, financial abundance. As is often a, a thing at some retreats, there, there was a, there was an actual live auction uh, and it was very, very fun uh, to watch the people in the room express their opulence, their abundance, their their absolute knowing that they're fully sourced and fueled and funded by the divine. <clears throat> now, you don't get that. <clears throat> Excuse me there. You don't get that when the place that you go to work every day and all day is nothing but, well, a drag. Where people are living from that sense of, of abundant worry or concern. One of the presenters this week spoke to um, in New Thought Circles. Now, this is not in the Science of Mind textbook, but in New Thought Circles, um, we often teach it, the teachings of Emma Curtis Hopkins and her five great denials. Um, there is no evil. There is no matter. There is no absence. There is no sin, sickness, death. Now, I don't want to play with all of those today because that's not what today is about. But, but there is that... There is no absence. There is no absence in the mind of the one, of the divine, of God, whatever name you use for it. There's no absence, meaning there, there can be no lack. There is no place in your life where there isn't enough of what's necessary. Now, it may seem different, right? And... Yes, we influence that because of the thought patterns and the beliefs and what we hold and, and what we believe, right? And all of that that we bring to it. But ultimately, that's the human condition. That's the human experience. At the level of the divine, in the divine experience, there is no lack. There is no absence. There's nothing missing from your life. There's no detours that you're taking in life. It's not like I want to go there and I'm, I'm going to this place, but uh, no, I'm not good enough to go directly there. I got to go over here first before I can go directly there. I don't believe in any of that. It's all separation. There are no detours in our lives. Now, there may be places where we are personally, humanly not ready to tread. <laughs> that. there's places I'm not meant to go there's places it, that it it's not that it's forbidden for me to be there it's just it's not going to help it's not going to support it's not going to move me in the direction of my vision of what I'm here the mission I'm here to accomplish so I stay I open up myself to the experience of being inspired by the opulent wonder that's all around me. As I look at the people in that auction, having a good time, willing to bid back and forth, high, much higher than many things were, were valued at because it's a charity, you know, it's a nonprofit. It, it, we're all doing good work. The money's going back into the organization and making sure we can continue to do the work that that organization's there to do. And, and I looked around the room and I went, well, here is inspiration. Here is, here's the inspiration on how we uh, 
perhaps how we support the longevity of the New Thought Media Network. But more importantly, how I lift up my own consciousness to a greater sense of, yeah, I can do this. You can do this. We can all be in that place, fully living it, not holding back, not saying, well, maybe next year. Or, you know, I, I just need, I need one more class or, or. That was in ministerial school, ministerial training. The great uh, Reverend Dr. Kathy Hearn looked at our class one night in a retreat setting. And and I forget how many people were in the room. Some really, well, everybody in the room was absolutely amazing, um, uh, truthfully. And she looked at us and she said, when are you a reverend? When do you become a reverend? And we went around the room and people had different answers and different feelings and different thoughts. And the theme we emerged upon was truly that you are when you say you are. Yes, you might not want to go out in public and use that title until you have some credentials or a piece of paper on the wall, or I got a piece of paper on the wall somewhere around here. Uh, and you are when you are doing that work. So when do you become a successful artist? The minute you decide you are. When do you become a successful author? The minute you decide you are. When do you become a successful dancer? The minute you say you are. That is the moment. We change the way we look at our own lives. And rather... and. This is one that's been hitting me along a lot lately, right? Is the, the concept that an artist has to be a suffering artist for a certain amount of time. This concept that you have to wait 20 years to be an overnight success. This concept that so many people buy into, and I'll I buy into it myself at times, and I'm working to buy right out of it, sell that crap off to somebody else. No, not really, just bury it. Uh, let's not give it to anybody else. Let's just bury it, right? And and get rid of those limiting beliefs so we may step fully into our power. The minute you decide, in the, in the thought, when you say, this is it, this is what I'm here to do, this is where we're going, this, this is my... Then it is... The providence of the universe to can collaborate on your behalf and bring that forward. Long time ago now, I forget where this all came. I, I for a long time used a phrase that the universe is conspiring on our behalf. Many of you may have heard that phrase. I am sure I picked it up at a new thought center somewhere along the last 20 years. The universe is conspiring for our good. Or what if that's, mm, I don't, I want to get rid of that. Because that's secretive. That's saying that I can't know what's going on or, or that I'm not supposed to be able to discern and, and, and know what's going on and how I'm getting to this ultimate goal of my life, of my mission, of how I'm here to fulfill what I'm here to do. I, I don't want that to be a secret. Not for me, <laughs> especially. And I definitely don't want it to be a secret from everybody out in the world. And I'm sure you don't want your vision, your mission to be a secret from everyone else. More than anything, I want everyone to buy into this recognition that you already are the flow. And the moment you say, I am living from opulent wonder, that I'm going to meet every moment of every day from that place of, wow, cool, this is amazing. This is what I get to do today. This is where we get to play. This is how I get to create today. 
Now, yeah, there'll still be days where things happen and, and we fall off that wagon. And, uh, you know, it'll be things that people will raise up and try to knock us off that wagon. But what I know is when I create a, an environment of looking at every event, every experience, every connection, every interaction as, wow, this is cool. Life flows. Life flows. My life begins to become a demonstration and outpicturing of the philosophy that I teach, that I, that I propolitize, if you will, that I, t that I am so adamant about. Life becomes an expression and outpicturing of that. And now I get to turn up the volume. Now you and everyone, remember, this is not just me. It's all every one of us. You can turn up the volume and amplify that flow. Have you ever met what, someone in your life that perhaps is, well, maybe just a little too much, a little too over the top? A, a, a little too excited about this thing or that thing or or whatever it may be. What if that person has just turned up their amp a little bit higher than you have? That's what it feels like to me when I meet somebody who's vibrating at a higher frequency, at a greater amplitude than me, then there can be a tendency to go, whoa. I have people like that in my life that I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to interrupt them. I don't, I, I, I have, eh, no, I'm, you know, they're, they're at a different level. I was taught this a long, long time ago. Anytime a new thought, you hear somebody start talking about levels, start questioning because there's no such thing as someone being at a higher level than yourself, than myself, than any of us. But I have people that I show up at a conference and, oh, you know, that's, hmm. I, I was, um, it was shared with me this week that there was somebody that felt that way about me at this conference and spent the first half of the week avoiding me because they knew that we were destined to be in a conversation together, but they didn't want to open up to what that conversation would reveal. And this person shared that with me about three quarters of the way through the conference. And it still took until the very last moment for spirit to put us in the same room in a quiet space where we could have talk. And we had the most amazing conversation. And what emerged through that is all types of new possibilities for that person, for myself, for this ministry, everything. All kinds of doors go boom, bing, 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 opening up. Because we spent the week turning up our sense of wonder, our sense of, of living in the flow, our sense of living from a place of abundance and opulence and truth and love and harmony. And through all of that, through all of that, we got to a place where she had turned up her amp just high enough. And my amp was right where it needed to. And we were able to come together and not create, but play, tune up. I don't know if we're going to use a music metaphor here, which, you know, amplifiers and music, they go together. Uh, we started to explore each other's style and, and got to know each other's history and got to know each other's what brought us to this juncture and what the vision is to go forward. Fully living from absolute wonder and, and excitement for who she is and what she's doing in the world. But we had to get on the same frequency. We had to get tuned in a bit. And that took a little bit of time. That is why I believe spiritual community is so incredibly important moving forward. Yes, we have been locked down, locked out, and any other kind of kick around you want to think about the last year and a half. But that's the way we look at it. 
now that can be done. And moving forward, I fully believe as a community, both online and in physical form, our job is to continue to amplify this, to, to, to turn it up, to live it out loud, to let people know we are living fully, fully from a sense of opulent wonder. Not abuse, not excess, not overflow. Just a deep knowing that everything necessary for the complete fulfillment of your mission on this planet comes into your life exactly as necessary. Exactly as necessary. And the fun part of that about that is coming to the realization that that means if there's something that isn't in your life, then it just isn't necessary right now. It doesn't mean it won't be there tomorrow. It doesn't mean it won't be there at some point because it just means it isn't just, just today. But when we live from that state of knowing, I am forever sourced, fueled and funded by the divine one, that I cannot, that there is no lack, there is no absence, there is no absence of anything. Then, then miracles happen, doors open, conversations emerge. A new consciousness is born in each of us. And we're able to to move that forward and to be that in the world. New Thought Media Network is all about creating an environment, a digital environment where you can tap in on your schedule when you want or catch our stuff live. Or catch it as it happens. Now we understand that it can be a little difficult to communicate in the room in many of our broadcasts. And in that way, this ministry is is fully committed to envisioning and following a vision for, for greater ways to create this sense of community. Because again, it is in through community that I get to see these experiences and I get to partake, be a part of them. That woman that avoided me for four days because she didn't want to have the conversation that neither of us knew was coming or what it would entail, um, walks away from that retreat inspired, I believe, by her admission, uplifted ready to look at the world with new eyes again. I come away from that, ready to look at ministry in the world with new eyes again. If you walk into whatever it is you're doing, and it doesn't have to be a retreat, right? You don't have to go away to do this. But if you walk into your workplace, if you walk into the supermarket, if you just sit behind the computer at your workplace, (laughs) whatever is going on, if you can bring a concept of wow how cool is this and how do i how do i bring a consciousness of abundance of prosperity of wonder of of that opulent sense of it's all good and it's all working and it's all right and those aren't platitudes that's not spiritual escapism or spiritual bypass that's what we know is our truth my humanness may not see this, but the divine within Low battery. rests in a place of absolute trust and prosperity that everything is working out exactly as it must. I'm not sure if you heard that little warning from my speaker that my battery's going low on my speaker, but that's on my speaker. It won't affect what's going on here. If you have questions, folks, please Low battery. feel free to chime those in. I'm going to do this and see if we can change that. Um, feel free to, to chime in with any questions you might have, any comments you might have. Um, we've got a little bit of time here. And, you know, the Science, Mind, and Spirit Lecture Series was intended to start Love from the book is. and teach a, and a, allow us to explore the teachings of Ernest Holmes and then expand out upon them and then expand into other regions and other aspects. We're going to do the same thing next year. 
we're going to go back, you know, right? It's been since June or July since we've had a lesson out of the book. Mine's right there over my shoulder. Right there, over my shoulder. Uh, so starting in January, we're going to go back to the book and start from the, from the beginning um, and go chapter by chapter. We'll have different speakers and, and we'll look at it from an, a new perspective because it's a new year. As we continue through the rest of this year, we do still, we're going to be here every Saturday and we've got uh, all next week, all next month, we're looking at gratitude. Uh, we've got some really fun things happening in uh, November and December. Uh, and we're trying to do, we're trying to get everybody together for one talk at the end of the year uh, as sort of a, uh, a, a big old revival of everybody that's done a talk for us for this this past year. So uh, and moving forward, you know, we'd always love to hear your feedback and all of that. But really what I'd love to hear, and if you're with us in the comments, what, where is there a sense where you want to live more fully? Where in your life? That's our big question. Where would you like to live more fully? Hmm. That's, that's an important point. Where would you like to live more fully? And even if perhaps you're near, near what many consider the end of your life, there's a whole nother talk, but I'll tell you, I've been hanging out with some people that are doing great, great, great work to support our wisdom keepers in the world. Those that have the life of a lifetime of experience and to, to support folks that maybe have been pushed aside by society a little bit to recognize you're here on the planet for a reason and you got a breath in you, you got a purpose. And let's find that way to activate that purpose, uh, especially if it's as a wisdom keeper or sharing the wisdoms of, of uh, past generations, of, of earlier generations. It, it's so important um, that we maintain this sense of, generational coherence seven forward seven back um uh, but again that's a whole nother talk so <laughs> uh but we want to do we do want to hear what you would like to hear from uh what you would like to hear about from us um you know how did you like this year's series uh did you do you, do you want to see this again or or is there something else you'd rather see on saturday mornings you're also able to catch our archives uh, of all the past shows on YouTube or Facebook, do a search for hashtag New Thought Media Network. Uh, and then if you add uh, Science of Mind Lecture or Saturday Lecture Series or Science of Mind Lecture Series, a lot of that will come up. Um, yes. Yes, Roy, we... Um, we, we know that. Um, I'm going to be straight up with you, Roy. I would highly suggest put that book aside and uh, and pick up the right one and pick up the, the uh, it's, I forget what it is. Um, I can get you the, uh, I'll get you the link. I can get you a link, Roy, because um, I'll be honest, there is no accurate way to translate from the books that everyone uses and that one. And we've argued, we've tried to put disclaimers on that individually, and but it's the uh, collective legally. There's no way we can stop those people from doing what they're doing, and that book is a mess. And I would really highly suggest just put it aside, and um, and pick up one of the um, the regular versions of the Science of Mind. And again, I'll I'll I will personally make it a crusade to find you the exact perfect copy, Roy. Um, and make sure you have that. Okay. Um, next week, who do we got next week? Next week, we got Reverend Victoria back with us. And she's going to start off our gratitude uh, month with why gratitude. Why gratitude. That's going to happen. Uh, so, And uh, the books we're referring to are the science of mind. And, and um, let me turn off the banner here. Whoops. I clicked out of that. Um, what we study is The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And um, and that's the 1938 edition. Um, 
what Roy is referring to is a book that combines the 1926 edition. That book has two editions, the 26 edition and then the 38 edition. There were some edits, some cleanups, some changes, some things were taken out, some things were added in. Um, and that book has the 38, the 1938 edition has become the standard textbook across many new thought um, educational programs, um, definitely within science, Centers for Spiritual Living, um, not so much unity. However, uh, unity does use it a little bit here and there. Other philosophy, you know, other uh, branches of new thought study homes as well. Um, so that's what uh, what we're on. And uh, hey, you know, Roy, I just got an idea. Send me a DM with your email address. Maybe we'll get you a new copy for Christmas. You've been our most loyal follower all year long. Um, and yes, Linda, I would agree with that. Uh, for many people, Living the Science of Mind, which is a completely book, different book, um, is uh, shorter vignettes, uh, more practical applications. It's a deeper collection of, uh, or a broader collection, let's say, of Holmes's writing, and uh, and is also very highly recommended in uh, early studies of the science of mind. Um, All right. So what do we got? Um, we still do have a little bit of time. Oh, hey, there's the puppy dogs. Hi, puppy dogs. Uh, Gorilla broadcasting, folks. There it is. We we do this for the love. <laughs> Perhaps someday we'll have a studio that's doggy proof. But uh, right now we love everybody's working from home. You know. All right. What uh, and uh, and we're getting a high puppies from out on on the Internet as well. Thank you. All right. I'm Reverend Robert. I'm going to get out of here for now. If you do have further questions, please drop them in the chat box. Let us know uh, what we can do to support you. If you'd like to know more about New Thought Media Network, please check us out. Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we do have a website, ntmedia.org, which is very soon about to go under undergo some major renovations. So, uh, But if you'd like to get involved and be part of our committed uh, giving programs, you can click on the donate button over there. Uh, before we do that, actually, why don't we say a quick thank you to some of our sponsors? Thank you, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, for your continued support. Thank you, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta, for your monthly contribution. Thank you, Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey, for your monthly contribution. And Suze Hodgson, thank you for your very generous donation. And a special thanks to Hefferlin Foundation for your generous technology grant. And a big shout out to all our committed donors. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that's adding to our financial well-being and the wonder and the abundance and the prosperity. Remember, there is no absence. So we're just setting the goals and calling in what we want and uh, bringing it forward. So thank you for being a part of that through our committee giving programs. If you'd like to become a part of that, again, just head over to the website, ntmedia.org, click on donate. You can sign up right there. We use a, an outside company, so your all your information is safe and secure. I don't know your credit card numbers. Nobody here does. Uh, but we are a 501c3, so all contributions are tax deductible as allowed by law. All right. I'm not sure how I got into that spiel, but I did, and we did. So we're done with it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us, folks. Uh, I love you. I really love that you're with us. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. I've got a couple more of these talks before the end of the year. So you'll see me back on this program again real soon. Until then, and until next time, peace.